Hey everybody, this is D Hunter, bringing another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane DC Multiverse King Shark from The Suicide Squad. King Shark is a Build-A-Figure. You have to get all four of these figures in front of you to be able to complete King Shark. King Shark is voiced by Sylvester Stallone in the upcoming film The Suicide Squad. There's actually a variant of him, a gold label version that's a Walmart exclusive if you don't want to get the entire wave. You could get that mega figure and he has some slightly different shorts, but for me, I'm very happy to have the entire wave and very happy to put them together before the film comes out. I got these figures from GameStop.com. They were $24.99 each, which is the retail price, free shipping, and there was a sale, a little bit of a discount going on. I paid about $95 for all five of these figures, including King Shark. If you do the math, that's less than 20 bucks a figure. What a steal. In this video, we're going to take a look at each of the figures, who comes up with parts of King Shark, we're going to assemble him off screen, and then compare him with a bunch of other figures. Hope you enjoy! And here's the back of all the packages of these figures. Let's go ahead and get them open. Alright, now that we got these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. I will tell you, these figures feel great in hand. They move good, they look good. Their accessories are good. In this video, we're going to put King Shark together. We're going to check out that figure. I will do separate videos on the rest of these figures, and they're great. We're not even going to touch on Warner Brothers, no gun mandate, etc. But I'll tell you, this is a fantastic haul here. Three new DC villains to add to my overall action figure collection. That is fantastic. And this is King Shark. is probably going to top the other one. And the likeness on Harley Quinn, just fantastic. Really liking these figures so far. Two thumbs up. So, let's get started. Let's check out all the parts of King Shark. So according to the packaging, figure number one is Polka Dot Man. Here he is with all his accessories laid out. Polka Dot Man comes with King Shark's head and sort of neck area. And it looks so good. King Shark's head here with his movable jaw. Look at the coloring, the detail. Very nice. Then you got this, I don't know, sort of neck area. I believe it goes under the head. As to avoid confusion, it simply says up and down. Figure number two is Bloodsport. Pretty cool looking figure so far. Bloodsport comes with King Shark's torso area. It's in two pieces, both the front and the back. Snap them together, and this is what you'll get. I went ahead and put King Shark's head onto his torso. Apparently other pieces at his neck, but the bottom half of his torso looking good so far. Then we've got the Peacemaker. Here he is, yet another brand new DC character in action figure form. Peacemaker comes with King Shark's arms. They look great. You can see the sort of webbing between his fingers. And then with his arms attached to his torso area, really coming together. And here's figure number four, Harley Quinn. The likeness is fantastic. Harley Quinn comes with King Shark's legs. Now, he has the blue shorts here. There is a variant edition of King Shark, and he's a mega figure. Warmer exclusive, and he's going to have sort of some plaid looking shorts. In case you didn't want to get the whole wave and you're only interested in him. And then here's King Shark, fully assembled. He looks and feels great, just like the rest of the wave. I would say every single one of them is easily an 8 out of 10. So this guy here, he's big, he's beefy, he's stupid, and he's cuddly at the same time. So let's take a look at him. King Shark here, here's his face. You can see his nostrils, his eyes, he kind of looks dumb. He definitely looks like King Shark from the film. The mouth, and yes, it is articulated. First of all, the coloring is very nice on the gums, the teeth, the pops. But you can open this whole thing up. It looks great. Two rows of teeth do not get in this guy's mouth. As we go further down, shoulders on a ball joint. It is single jointed elbows, and honestly, if they're not flush straight, I really don't like the way that looks. His bag, my little fin, has a little white scuff here, kind of annoying. 
but you can see the different texturing, the gills here. He looks really nice. He has a double ball joint like every other McFarlane figure. Articulation is very nice under here, but the shorts really prohibit a lot of it from working. Webbed feet, webbed fingers, the sculpt and paint job is just very nice on this guy. And he might be the biggest McFarlane figure yet. I think he's bigger than Bane. Here he is disassembled and then reassembled. And just a closer look at his face, which I think is really well done. You can see his eyes and nostrils. He's got different sculpting under his eyes, around his nose, some texturing, some weathering. It's very well done. And then, of course, we've got the inside of the mouth. Two layers of teeth at the bottom. Now, notice they didn't do that at the top, but you can't really tell. And even the tongue is textured differently. Not sure how well you can see that. But very pleased with what I'm seeing here. Normally, this would be the part of the video where I show off his accessories, but this guy didn't come with any. And you know what? That's okay. He was pretty much a bonus figure. Like, build a figure if you get the rest of the wave. And this guy is huge. It's not like you're not getting a good bang for your buck. The gold label Walmart exclusive variation, that one does come with some accessories. I believe he has a severed arm and severed leg with some military fatigues. Kind of interesting. And you know what? After shooting that clip, I thought to myself, I've got some severed limbs as well. We've got a couple of Georgie's severed arms from NECA's It line. And then we have Dr. Arnold's from Mattel's Jurassic Park line. Here's King Shark eating one of those limbs. Works perfect. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at this figure and some accessories you can use to enhance this guy, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, he's sitting at about 8.6 inches tall which can translate to about 22 centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation. Starting with his head here, of course, we've got that articulated jaw. It can open and shut. His head here, it's on a ball joint. It can rotate from around, turn from side to side, look up and down a pretty good amount there. Pretty impressive range of motion. Shoulders on a ball joint, goes out 90 degrees up, down, around, all that good stuff. Elbows here, single jointed. They go in a little bit less than 90 degrees. There is rotation as well. I don't really like the way it looks when it's in midway there. And I will say I'm starting to see some stress marks already on this part. He's got a ball joint his torso, rotate around, go forward and back. Another ball joint his waist, rotate around, go forward and back. Now his legs, goes out about that far. The shorts really hinder his hip articulation. Forward and back, almost not at all. He has some knees, but you can't even really use them with the shorts there. Then his ankles here, forward and back, can tilt and rock, and there is toe articulation. And if you pop them apart, you can see that he has all the articulation of your standard McFarland DC Multiverse figure. The legs would be able to go out a lot farther if it weren't for the shorts. They'd be able to go forward and back a lot more. You'd be able to actually use that knee articulation, and it is actually inside of there. So, a little disappointing. It looks good, but his legs really don't function very well. I would love to see what some people are going to do. Maybe cut it, put some cloths off, go to replace it. Be very curious to see what people come up with. Here's King Shark. Just living and chilling in the sewer, eating an arm. Here's King Shark saying hand. And Amanda Waller, yes, that is your hand. Very good. Here's Rick Flagg on the walkie, asking the rest of the team, what's everyone got? And then King Shark is on the walkie, and somebody says, bird. And Rick Flagg's like, get off the walkie. Here's King Shark and the team of figures from the Suicide Squad. So far, McFarland has given us these five figures. There has been no announcement or any tease about any further figures, but there's about 16 more characters they can make from this film. I really hope they trickle a few more out at least. Now let's check them out next to some other action figures. Starting off with Mattel's version of the Build-A-Figure King Shark. Here he is next to Mattel's DC Multiverse Build-A-Figure King Shark. 
this Mattel figure is an absolutely top-notch example of the better part of DC Universe Classics and Multiverse. Absolutely fantastic and beautiful figure. And I'll say, he does look to clock a hair taller than McFarlane King Shark. They're from different incarnations. They're both absolutely fantastic figures, easily 9 out of 10. The Mattel one is from the comics, and of course McFarlane is from the DC Cinematic Universe. And there was a Hammerhead variant. This alternate head came with a Toys R Us exclusive Damian Wayne as Robin. Of course, being the guy that I am, I had to complete both versions. Here he is, next to a DC Direct Shark figure. I believe this guy's a Green Lantern villain. Then, next to a Mattel DC Universe Classics Shark figure. This is another DC villain. And here he is, next to a custom version of the Great White Shark. The Great White Shark is a modern bat villain. Then, next to a custom shark from the Terrible Trio. The Terrible Trio are some bat villains. And here's the rest of the Terrible Trio. We've got the Fox, the Shark, and the Vulture. And now, next to a random shark toy. Speaking of shark figures, allegedly NECA is still making that Jaws Bruce. That's the shark for the film. And that thing looks to be about two feet long. Now let's check him out. Next to some other McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Here he is, next to the rest of the Suicide Squad wave. Here's King Shark, next to the recently released Zack Snyder's Justice League wave from McFarlane's DC Multiverse. These guys are from the same cinematic world, both for the DC Cinematic Universe. And here he is, next to the Wonder Woman 1984 figures. These are also from the same universe. Then, next to an Arrow figure, Arrow is the only live-action DC figure that's not from the DC Cinematic Universe. He's from TV's Arrowverse. Now let's check him out, next to some larger McFarlane DC Multiverse figures. Here he is, next to Devastator and Gorilla Grodd. These figures are both standard releases in the $20 range. And here he is, next to the McFarlane DC Multiverse Mega Figs. So far, they've made Steppenwolf and Darkseid. There is an armored version of Darkseid I have to track down, and there's an upcoming variant of King Shark. Rumor is, we've also got a couple Swamp Thing figures in the near future. Now let's check them out. Next is some other McFarland Build-A-Figure, or Collect to Connect releases. We have Darkfather, Merciless, King Shark, Bane, and then about half of the Joker Batman robot. And speaking of large, oversized, deluxe DC figures, here he is next to several different large Mattel figures. These guys are all collect-to-connect build-a-figures. We've got Clayface, Killer Croc, Solomon Grundy, and Batman's Justice Buster suit. And then, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles oversized figures. Believe it or not, these guys are intended to be in the 7-inch scale, just like McFarland toys. No one has matched what DC Direct has done with this scale yet. Now let's check him out. Next is some action figures from different various companies to see how he fits in both scale and style wise in case you want to know which lines you can mix him with. Since he's a McFarland figure, they're typically the 7 inch scale. I'm going to start off my comparisons with some of the larger action figure lines I collect and work while he's smaller. Here he is, next to some of his McFarland toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines. All from McFarlane toys, all 7 inch scale. Then, next to some more McFarlane toys. These are from different various video game properties. And now, next to some Jax Pacific wrestling figures. And here he is, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here, next to some NECA figures. Then, Next to some Mattel wrestling figures. And now, next to some Jazzwares AEW wrestling figures. And here he is, next to some Mezco 112th cloth soft goods action figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here, next to some Mafex figures. Then, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here he is, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. And finally, next to some Jazz Wars Fortnite figures. Overall, I love this figure. He is so fun. He looks so good. The detailing, 
The sculpt is fantastic. Paint job is excellent. Only thing I think they could do better on would be the articulation. And I do get the bigger the figure, the harder it is to break up the sculpt and make it look good. If I were to rate this guy, I'm going to give him a 9 out of 10. I am just enjoying the hell out of this guy. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Keep an eye out for the rest of my videos on the Suicide Squad figures. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.